All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we would like to welcome you to our uh, Fall 2020 Higher and Post-Secondary Education Applied Project poster session. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, well, first, we'd like to, of course, welcome our, our, our presenters um, and our graduate students who will be sharing um, with you all shortly about some of the work that they've done over the last uh, 15 weeks, although in many cases for many of our students, this represents um, a longer engagement with the topic, whether it's through their own professional careers or through practicum experiences. Um, but what this culminating um, project will give you an opportunity to do is to learn a little bit more about um, the things that they've been able to research and gather data on and share findings related to uh, critical and timely issues within higher and post-secondary education um, context. Um, I should, should have start by saying my name is uh, Kia McGuire. I'm an associate professor in the higher and post-secondary education program. My gender pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge the ancestral homelands of the Akami, Atham, and Pipash people's lands, which we all are working from and learning on. Um, and so I would like to start by simply sharing a little bit about the program and more importantly, where this project fits within that. Um, and the, within students' learning experiences. And then I'll turn it over to my colleague, uh, Dr. McIntyre, who will share a little bit more about the floor of the events um, for today. Um, so um, again, our higher and post-secondary education program um, is, is an opportunity um, and a learning experience that's really geared to prepare uh, professionals to work in a variety of contexts on college and university campuses. Um, one of the things that is, uh, has become a core identity of our program um, has been the process by which we uh, help um, and work alongside students as they learn uh, uh, ways to gather data, um, analyze data, um, all in the service of improving um, um, higher education practice and policy uh, wherever they may be located. Um, and so this applied inquiry or applied project uh, that poster session that you see here today is a, is a culmination of a 15 week um, exercise or experience during the first seven and a half weeks, our students have an opportunity to design a project. Um, of course, these projects are um, oftentimes very ambitious. And over our 15 weeks, we are able to pare it down um, into something that is not only manageable, but that will be impactful with the data that they're able to gather. And then in this uh, session B of the semester, uh, students are able to uh, carry out and, um, their research project. Um, and we'll get a little bit towards this at the end of the, the uh, um, session today when we give some thank yous, but you should know it's, this represents not only the work of our students and the faculty who are in the classroom, but also um, a number of mentors who sign up to um, work with students along and, and help give feedback on their projects as they're being designed and carried out. Um, so we look forward to you all engaging with our um, students today, um, asking them questions, learning about uh, their research, um, and hopefully having a very um, invigorating conversation. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Dr. McIntyre, who will say a little bit more about how the rest of the afternoon will be spent. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Lisa McIntyre. I am an executive director in the university provost office at ASU and teach um, in the master in higher ed program. Um, the applied project is one of my favorite classes um, because as Dr. McGuire said, this is about the topics that the students are most interested in. And so I always learn a lot um, about topics that I maybe don't get exposure to on a regular basis. So I hope um, all our guests um, have that same experience. Um, our students will be presenting um, in small breakout rooms of three to four folks. Um, Dr. McGuire is gonna put a link um, in the chat where you can find the Zoom breakout room link for the individual that you're here to support um, or the breakout room that you're most interested in. Um, they are grouped uh, by topics. Um, we ask that you mute your um, microphones. You're all doing a great job of that if you're not the one presenting. Um, we will present in order of the link that um, Dr. McGuire just shared. There will be a facilitator in the room to just kind of make sure all the technical uh, pieces go right. They will be recorded sessions. We also ask that you hold all your questions until all of the presentations in your breakout room are complete. Um, and then we'll open up that session for questions. We do encourage you to ask questions. Um, these folks are experts on this topic um, and have spent a lot of time and energy 
um, becoming experts. And so um, this is a great opportunity for them to, to answer any questions that you might have. Once all the presentations in your breakout room are complete, we ask you to come back to this main session room um, for us to wrap up the program. So with that, um, Dr. McGuire, anything I missed or you want to add before we break out? Nope, oh, that, that's it. And please reach out to us um, for um, any questions that you might have. Dr. McIntyre and I will be, will be moving from room to room. I see that I just got a message in the chat asking, can, you, can individuals move from room to room? Uh, yes, as long as you're not a presenter. So all of our, our guests beyond the students are able to, um, again, move um, as you would like to bounce around to hear different topics um, of conversation and discussion. Um, and so again, at this time, we'll give folks about you know five to seven minutes to make your way over to your rooms. Um, for, for our students who are on the call, again, look at the sheet as well so that you can go to the room that you will be in. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for now. So thank you and welcome all again. All right, so my name is Danielle Olson and I am finishing my capstone project for the higher education and post-secondary masters. Um, I wanna present you the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on ASU students and academic performance. So I definitely found the pandemic interesting, especially since the whole world has to adapt and change their lifestyles and school work. Um, so it definitely has a, an impact. So my problem is the impact that has had on college students continuing their post-secondary and higher education. Uh, as we know, it's still evolving, especially in Arizona. And I think researching the impact it has on students will help further better our understanding and adapt, be able to adapt to better learning resources and tools for students to be um, remote learning. So my research purpose was just to examine how COVID-19 has impacted Arizona State University students and uh, with their classes, studies, GPA, um, more importantly and specifically how it has impacted the GPA and studying time allotted. So for my uh, research, I actually was given access to a survey. It was taken in April, 2020, it was posted online. It was a Qualtrics survey that was done by WP Carey School of Business here at ASU. Uh, so the pandemic basically hit at ASU and everyone went remote learning in March. So this was completed in April, 2020. Uh, the data is representation of before the actual 2020 semester and spring ended. Um, each participant received a $10 Amazon gift card upon completion of the survey. The sample size included 1,474 undergraduate students. They had to be enrolled in that semester. They had to be of the age of 18 or higher. So as you can see, the, the demographic information I have here, there was 50.27% female, 49 and 0.73% male. Uh, ethnicity was 51.6% white Caucasian and 48.4% non-white Caucasian. Um, the class standing actually came from all across the board. So it was freshman to senior. As you can see the percentages here, they are pretty almost even throughout the freshmen through seniors, which I think gives a good implication um, the average age of the students, of the total students, was 21.79. Um, so there were actually 97 questions asked in regards to all kinds of different things, including enrollment, graduation, family education, finances, um, academic performance, choice of major, social and study habits, employment expectations for their future. So for this study, I, I chose the questions that were related specifically to academic performance. Um, so here, this, this depicts um, students were asked what their cumulative GPA was. And this is coming into spring semester. So this is anything from before up to spring. They were also asked what they would expect to receive as a GPA by the end of the spring semester and what they were expecting to receive if 
this pandemic hadn't happened. So the graph shows those three questions. Uh, the question or the GPA does go from zero to point four point oh. But the students that reported 3.5 to 4.0 indicated they were perceived to have a higher GPA than their previous cumulative GPA. And they were going to receive a higher GPA with the pandemic rather than you know, not having that pandemic happen. Also noting the 3.0 students uh, also reported a higher perceived GPA with the pandemic than without. So here I just wanted overall again to group the GPAs showing the 3.6 and 4.0 students having that higher GPA. I also wanted to find out if this had anything to do with female and versus male. Um, these were the only two uh, identities of gender on this specific survey, but females reported higher GPA scores overall. Uh, 3.6 and higher expected to receive a higher GPA than their cumulative before the spring semester. And the perceived GPA is higher for both male and females with the pandemic. Students were also asked two questions. One was, how many hours have you studied two hours prior to uh, the survey? Or I'm sorry, two weeks prior to the survey? And how many hours do you think you would study two weeks prior to the survey if COVID had not happened? The, the percentage was very small. The average total for both male and female was uh, hours of study with COVID was 15.08. Without was only 16.01. So it really didn't fluctuate that much. However, you can see here that students uh, that were reported female were actually uh, studying more than males were. So they were asked about their student uh, time allotment. Uh, I specifically picked three different questions that I thought would were per, you know perceived for this survey. So they were asked um, about their academic performance. How many uh, has your studying with peers changed less, more, or the same as before? Studying alone, less, more, same as before, same with classes. How much time are you allotting for class time? And actually, both genders show that they are studying less with peers, which is pretty much obvious because we're all home and Zoom. Um, they are studying more alone. Females are actually studying more alone than males. And they both have actually time uh, allocated less time towards class. I thought that was definitely interesting. Um, so I wanted to also see if there's any impact with course withdrawals. And actually of the 1,474 students, only 4.7% of females and 5.63% of males withdrew from classes in the spring. So it really shows, I guess, the pandemic didn't affect people dropping courses as I guess they were working from home. So going back to the cumulative GPA, uh, with the perceived GPA with COVID and the perceived GPA without COVID, the, the data performed from the students on the survey actually shows both male and female within 3.0 and 3.5 to 4.0 GPA range were expected to receive a higher GPA due to COVID um, by having that more studying time alone. And so it's definitely interesting. I did have, you know, additional research and questions on it since this was done in April. COVID-19 was brand new. Everybody had to switch over. It was only a month. So my curiosity would be for future research or students going to do better or worse since now they've actually had that time to adjust to different learning styles. And also a thought on that was you know, in the very beginning, I'm curious if students reported their, what their GPA would have been. Maybe they were higher because professors were a little bit easier in the very beginning. Um, also, would the results be different if the survey was taken, you know, in the fall semester? Um, definitely additional research to be done on this. Um, 
And then something else that was on my mind was students in the future, curious to see if they will be doing online only or wanting to use ASU Sync half time on campus or if they really want to come back to campus. I think it could differ between freshmen and say upperclassmen, freshmen wanting to come to course, the campus to have courses there to have that college experience. Um, I also wonder if the researchers didn't give out those $10 Amazon gift cards, would they still have that huge group that responded since they, you know, they gave an incentive towards them. And people are not apt to fill out surveys for that. So um, that is all I have. I look forward to any questions and thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, um, Thank you for that, Jordan. Um, so I have to say, this is my first time participating in a, a virtual uh, poster session. And um, that felt like a whirlwind, but in a good way. Um, so thank you all for your presentations. Uh, both Dr. McIntyre and I had an opportunity to hop around from room to room. Um, I'm actually gonna stop talking and turn over to Dr. McIntyre and I'll say a little bit more to, to close us out at the end. All right, I just wanted to congratulate all of you. You should be very proud of what you did. Um, I know this semester was like none other. Um, just like Dr. McGuire, that was my first um, virtual poster session. Um, and I just want to commend you all on your resilience and determination um, in making it work. We had all kinds of fun challenges to work through um, and we all did it and had great communication. And I think, um, you you all just the potential is is limitless for all of you so i wish you all the best of luck um i hope to hear updates from you all where your careers take you and um I'm always here as a resource for for you all so um i see all the applause and uh celebrations going up um it might be a bit much to unmute and do a round of applause but um uh want to thank all the guests um family members who were able to join us today. Um, that is one of the great things about our virtual um, opportunity is that I think we might have been able to expand our, our audience a bit more. Um, we will be sharing recordings with the students. So if you weren't able to have a guest join us today, um, please share it with them. Um, there's no way any of us would have made it through this program without all the support of our family and friends. Um, and I also want to thank our colleagues. Um, so every student in the in this part of the project has access to a professional mentor who's met with them multiple times throughout the semester and giving them feedback and encouragement. And so um, thank you all for for doing that for our students. It really um, was great to see the the feedback and insights and having that other perspective to bounce ideas around was really helpful and benefited the work. So. Um, all right, well, I'll stop gushing. Uh, Dr. McGuire, <laughs> what did you have? Yeah, so just one more um, uh, thank you before we move on, which is to Jody um, and her team um, who have handled all the logistical um, um, responsibilities for today is setting up the virtual rooms, making sure all the Zoom links work and making sure that we have facilitators in each room. So thank you to Jody, uh, Ashley, Pinnock, Liam, Liam, Caitlin, uh, for your support um, and making sure that this program went off uh, without any hiccups. So, so thank you all very much uh, for making this easy for Dr. McIntyre and myself. Um, I also would just like to echo Dr. McIntyre and thank our mentors. Um, I'm, usually we have like mentors and program instructors like raise their hand. Um, I think there's a reaction to do that. So if you know how to raise your hand or put a thumbs up, maybe. <laughs> If you want to put a thumbs up, how about that? Um, so that we can acknowledge all of our mentors and program faculty who teach and work alongside our students throughout the program. Um, your support is sincerely um, and deeply appreciated. Um, as you all know, I think one of the biggest strengths of our program um, is that we have meaningful and long lasting relationships with individuals who are um, educators and scholars uh, working both at ASU, but also um, across the valley. Um, and sometimes in, as well as in uh, other states. And so um, we appreciate uh, the support that you provide and, and the mentorship and uh, the learning that you, or the, the way that you help to expand the learning of our students in our program. So thank you very much uh, for that. And most importantly, I wanna say uh, congratulations and thank you to our students. Um, I'm sure it cannot go um, overstated, I think how unique this semester um, has been. 
um, and you all um, continue to um, approach the project um, and your uh, capstone experience with um, enthusiasm, uh, with a level of dedication, um, a level of um, uh, flexibility and creativity uh, that I think um, I was just excited to see and gave me also energy as I entered um, and worked with you all over the last seven and a half weeks. Um, and so I know very few things feel like um, it's, it's normal as far as celebrating things in this particular context, but we do hope that you will find time to honor this moment in some way uh, to reflect back on all of the hard work that you've accomplished over your time in the program um, and that you are able to enjoy at least a moment of reprieve with family and friends and colleagues um, because what you have accomplished um, not only today and throughout the semester but over the program um, is definitely worth uh, celebrating um, and it has been our pleasure um, to be on this journey alongside of you. Um, so there's just two more things before we wrap up. So first one is kind of a, an announcement of sorts, which is at the very end, we'll ask all mentors, uh, program faculty and students to stay on uh, the call so that we can take um, a photo. Um, we may have to take multiple photos. I actually don't know how this works, taking photos in Zoom, but Jody will be here to assist us with that. Um, and also every uh, semester during the Capstone experience, we um, have an opportunity to recognize a student, uh, one of your colleagues and um, peers, um, who is um, nominated um, by uh, program faculty um, as a recognition for their um, achievement and contributions, um, both inside and outside of the classroom to the higher post-secondary education program. And so this year we'll have an opportunity to do the same. And what I'm going to do is just share very briefly um, what um, one nominator said about this particular student um, before I announce who the student is. And, and again, we um, and Lindsay, Dr. Dipple, who is on the call, normally does this part and does it much more eloquently than I do as I <laughs> fumble through this process. But it's really an opportunity for us to uh, recognize a, a peer who um, who has made uh, significant contributions, who has also impressed upon faculty with their dedication, not simply in this course, but throughout the program, um, and is therefore worthy of the, the nomination. We usually will hand you a piece of paper um, or a certificate of, um, of an award um, framed. Um, we will have to connect after this in order to pass that along to you. Um, but one nominator said about uh, this student, that this student is extremely engaged um, they also demonstrate a high level of intellectual uh, curiosity, um, and they also not only work well with students, but um, embrace uh, collaboration, um, and that this student in particular deserves recognition for their outstanding contributions that they made to the learning um, environment within and across classrooms. And so without further ado, that student is Dakota Weber. So let's give Dakota a round of applause. And also, Dakota, congratulations. I know you didn't know this was happening. Um, you and I can connect after to make sure that you get your certificate and award. But again, congratulations um, and for uh, a, an award that's well deserved. Okay. You. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So we're going to stop there. Again, thank you for everyone who um, came and visited with us. We'll ask for the students and program faculty um, and mentors to stay on so that we can get one picture. Um, and we will share that out with everyone as well.